basal ganglia in the brain play a critical role in how we select our actions and how we learn to respond to the environment around us to efficiently obtain resources. Key neurons within the basal ganglia are disrupted in disease states such as Parkinson's disease and drug addiction. So we want to understand more about how basal ganglia neurons work. The coronary interneurons in the striatum are few in number, but they give rise to very dense innervation. These neurons are well known for showing relatively steady tonic firing, which is sometimes interspersed with brief pause responses. These pauses are thought to play an important role in reward-related learning. For example, during Pavlovian learning, Cholinergic interneurons pause their firing briefly for around 200 milliseconds in response to a sensory cue and a reward. This pause response can actually have up to three phases. A brief initial burst prior to the pause, the pause itself, which can also be a very slow firing period, and then followed by a so-called rebound burst before returning to baseline tonic firing rate. Furthermore, the pause response occurs simultaneously with a change in activity in another side of neurons that signal reward-related events. When cholinergic interneurons pause, there is a coincident burst in midbrain dopamine neuron firing. Together, these events are thought to help select and learn about our motivated behaviors. But what information is being conveyed by pauses in cholinergic interneuron firing? In particular, how are pauses driven? To date, several mechanisms have been proposed, but none have explained the diverse features of pauses seen across different experiments. There has been no consensus. We set out to find the underlying mechanism for pausing. We monitored the firing rate of cholinergic interneurons and also the local field potential which is a readout of excitatory input. And we found that activity in cholinergic interneurons reports change in excitatory input. We saw that cholinergic interneurons have the highest firing rate when excitatory input is increasing, but it's not at its highest levels. And they have lowest firing rate when the excitatory input is receding, but it's not at its lowest levels. In other words, the pause in cholinergic interneurons seems to reflect the withdrawal of the excitatory input, but not the absolute level of excitation. And the pause does not depend on any burst prior to it. We test the causality by applying currents to individual neurons. And we confirm that brief excitatory current can induce a pause when the current is receding. We then looked for the cellular mechanisms. With the help of pharmacological tools to block candidate receptors and ion channels, we excluded potential mechanisms that include dopamine D2 receptors, GABA inputs, IH currents, and calcium currents. Although these mechanisms can affect cholinergic interneuron excitability, they are not responsible for inducing the pulse. Rather, we identify a key role for a KV7 voltage-dependent potassium channel, which is a non-inactivating delayed rectifier current, an IKR. To corroborate and understand how the IKR is sufficient to generate the pulse, we use the computational model. By plotting the potassium current during excitatory input, it becomes evident that the delayed activation kinetics of the outward IKR allow an overshoot in memory potential when the excitatory input is increasing. Conversely, the slow inactivation of the IKR causes an undershoot of memory potential when excitatory input is receding. Historically, there has been substantial interest in whether the pause is due to the action of dopamine. Dopamine can directly inhibit cholinergic interneurons via a D2 receptor mediated current. Using optogenetic tools that allow us to selectively activate dopamine axons, we confirm that dopamine can induce a pause, but this pause is relatively slow in onset. In behaving animals, this D2 driven current will be too slow to drive the pause, which normally coincides with the burst activity in dopamine neurons. 
A different mechanism is needed to pulse the cholinergic interneurons with sufficiently short latency, and IKR is the best candidate so far. But this does not rule out dopamine as playing an important role in learning. Since dopamine can potentiate the strength of synaptic input to cholinergic interneurons during learning, we propose that dopamine will promote acquisition of pulse response during behavioral learning by weighting excitatory inputs and in turn promoting the pulse response on recession from the enhanced input. In summary, we have demonstrated that cholinergic interneurons can be paused by the decay of excitatory input. No direct inhibition is necessary. The mechanism we have identified explains previous observations about the pulse response and suggests that the pulse response is encoding dynamic inputs to the striatum, as well as plasticity in inputs which can be modulated, particularly by dopamine. This finding helps us to understand better the regulation of striatal function and could in turn help us to understand better disease states like Parkinson's when normal interactions between striatal acetylcholine and dopamine are disrupted.